Hey everybody, it's been an interesting week, it's been a historic week, and a very bumpy one. And a lot of people are very concerned about some of the happenings that are going on right now. And I'm going to cover a whole bunch of stuff that everybody needs to know as an investor. And it is a Bitcoin story, but it's way more than that. And it's horrifying the type of stuff that's happening now. I have a lot of data and support for the type of things I'm going to say today. And you can make up your own mind. But I don't have all the answers. There's still a few things that I'm not quite sure of. And everybody's been trying to figure out exactly what is OTC? How come the price of an ETF doesn't exactly reflect exactly what's going on? And all of that. Well, that will be addressed today. So thank you all for coming. Hit the like. Let's do a deal. If you learn something new, hit the like. I guarantee you, every video, you'll learn something new. Because I learned something new <laughs> putting it all together as well. So first of all, uh, this is about money, media, and corruption, and uh, not financial advice. Don't forget to subscribe. Unique content every single day. So let's talk about what's happening. First of all, a lot of people, in their minds, they were thinking, okay, money's coming in, yes. A ton of it, yes. 12 ETFs, yes. Bitcoin price is going to go up. Uh-huh. No, not exactly. And I'll dig into exactly why that is right now. But, and a shout out to everybody here as well. I think I see Mr. Hammer there and Dogwood Days and everybody else. Thank you so much. And the moderators in the chat. I forgot to mention that because I'm so amped up. But here you can see li liquidations of the last 24 hours. Very, very heavy on the long side on Bitcoin. Over $100 million in liquidations, a quarter of a billion in total. And that is because people went long they were expecting, okay, ETFs launched. Let's do leverage long on this and go to the moon. And no, there's bigger forces in play. We'll dig into that. Now, what happened? Uh, so far, the spot ETF volume, day one, I've got a detailed analysis of day one versus day two. We'll dig into later in the show. But you can see here, the volume is all GBTC. But why? Not BlackRock? BlackRock, we're supposed to have 2 billion to hit it on the first day. Well, that didn't transpire. So a little bit of TA for a second. This is the SVP indicator on TradingView. If blue is greater than yellow, the buyers are in control. But if yellow is greater than blue, the sellers are in control. Little lesson of the day. If you know my TA videos, you'd know about this as well. Thank you so much, Jimmy, as well, for coming. So let's see exactly what's happening with the actual buying and selling. Last two days of GBTC, remember the market just closed Right before I did this, yellow, all the way today, heavy, heavy, heavy GBTC selling, very little buying, all dumpage. Yesterday was bad too, but today is even worse. Hmm, what does that mean? <laughs> we all know that GBTC, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, has 650,000, 660,000 Bitcoin in it, but with this type of selling, what exactly does that mean? Well, we're going to break that down. Why, first of all, is the selling happening? The answer is real simple. And these guys have been milking it for... <laughs> it was a movie thing, the guy milking the cat. Milking it for the longest time ever. And they're so used to milking it, they don't want to give that up. But that has caused a whole ruckus in the market. You can see here, the fees for GBTC, in some cases, are six times higher, seven times higher, more than some of the competition. And that is causing a huge problem. That's causing the ARB, that's causing the people with GBTC in an account to ditch their GBTC and put the money straight into another asset with lower fees, which is logical. Unless, of course, they're trapped in a big tax situation where they've got a very low cost basis and it may be worth holding on to it for a while, at least top of the bull market, before getting out. So that's the reason for all of this crazy selling. The question is, can the other 11 ETFs absorb all the Bitcoin or is there a time lag in between? You'll see in a minute. So the question I tweeted this uh, either last night or whatever, I don't remember, but thanks for playing, signed Wall Street. <coughs> it's possible, that is one of the questions, that the Wall Street firms accepted a ton of cash yesterday for Bitcoin ETFs and are now deploying the funds <clears throat> with a $6,000 delta in price. Allegedly. 
I'm just guessing because I know how these body chests work. They don't instantly settle. If you put a thousand bucks into an IBTC ETF, they don't run out instantaneously and buy Bitcoin. No, 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 no. They settle at the end of the day. And considering by the end of the day, they're finished work, they're probably at the cocktail bar and they're not rustling through the receipts and doing all the fulfillment. That may happen the next day. And if it did, wow, you sell something for, say, $47,000 and you could buy it for $43,500 today. Not bad. Not bad at all. So the question is, does Wall Street have a history of corruption? Can we trust them? Well, it goes back to the beginning of time where Wall Street has uh, so much corruption. I mean, hundreds of years. I was going to put together a chart of all the cases, <laughs> but it got too big and it wouldn't make any sense. But this stuff happens all the time. We have all the scandals, all of the games, you know, in the 1900s all the way to 20, 30 years ago to... 20 years ago, uh, the Enron scandal to the global financial crisis to the SEC continually fines Morgan Stanleys and JP Morgans and all the Morgans and all the Morgans, which have been corrupt since the beginning of time. Wall Street is corrupt. They found games. And if you are on the receiving end of money, okay, you're going to win because then you can manipulate and you can put things down to a little delay, a little timing, whatever else. That's the problem. But there's more. There's more to this whole story. Now we have a huge revolution happening in place. We have the old guard who have become anti-crypto. Uh, these are firms like Bank of America, owned by Merrill Lynch and Vanguard, etc. All denying customers access to spot ETFs per Fox News. So these, uh, this alliance is growing in popularity. They don't want you having these Bitcoin ETF thingies, which is kind of unusual especially considering some of these actually own proxies themselves, like Vanguard owns MicroStrategy. Strange. And even Kate Dunlong Long was quite surprised about all of this as well. She says, I'm surprised. Wow. Bitcoin ETFs have created an incredible fissure in the fund management industry. Uh, many pursued it, some didn't. And having worked with Vanguard in the past to implement a non-crypto blockchain project it has great people but i'm sure they're watching the feedback caitlin it's not the feedback it's the mass exodus the call centers you've got to wait half an hour for your phone to be answered at vanguard because everybody's leaving <laughs> you know americans and probably hopefully most humans on earth don't like people telling them how they can spend their money enter cbdc's we spoke enough about that i won't cover that today but that's the crazy thing about the world so Hopefully I'm painting a pretty scary picture here so far. But what do they want to protect? Well, they're still pushing their 60-40 portfolio. Vanguard portfolio allocation model 60-40. If you go back between 1926 and 2021, average annual return 9.9%. Not bad. But why don't we just look at the last 10 years and get a better feel for exactly what's going on. And this is the port portfolio return for a 60-40 portfolio over the last decade, was 6.1%. Now, what happens if you insert just a little bit of Bitcoin in there, like a 1% allocation or a little 2% hit, or maybe go crazy, go 5%. Well, that dramatically changes your 10-year return. You can see here over the last decade, a 60-40 portfolio, 60% 60 equity is what it means, and 40% bonds, had an annualized return of 6.1%, which, as you know from me, that's not good enough. However, if you had added just 5% Bitcoin into that mix, your return would be 157%, showcasing the powerful impact of Bitcoin. Also, the other lines there, uh, the traditional is orange, the green teal is 1% allocation and 2.5% in purple. And I covered actually in a video this week, the recommended professional allocations to Bitcoin. They all vary, vary from anywhere from 2% up to 10%. So that's where things are going. And that is the impact over the last decade that Bitcoin can have in your portfolio because it's hard, it's scarce, and adoption is increasing. The only way is up. But why, why is it down considering the ETFs and all the money flow coming in? We'll get to that in a minute. Now, uh, as I did mention as well, 6.1% is not going to cut it. Shout out to Saifedean. He basically says fiat debases at 14%. And humans now get that. Now, it's far more extreme if you're in 
Nigeria or Argentina or any of these other places, but it's also really bad in the United States. The last three years, I shared an octa on Tuesday, the amount of debasement, the amount of CPI hit people are actually taking in the shorts, and it's not pretty right now. But as I say, if you're not making 14%, you're not treading water. You're drowning. If you're making 6%, you're dead. It's not going to cut it for any type of retirement or any type of plan for financial freedom. And that's just a fact. So let's continue on the journey. Who else can you not trust? Well, government lawmakers, the people making laws, the senators, the lawyers themselves who are lawyers are spreading lies. This is from, I won't mention her name, but the SEC is wrong on the law and wrong on the policy. And again, I tweeted this last night, 15 hours ago and etc etc but <laughs> what's beautiful about elon musk's community notes is yes no this sec is not wrong and it's the american court that decided approving a bitcoin etf is lawful this is incredible that a lawyer a government lawmaker is lying and telling the falsehoods in front of the people on twitter and then the dc court of appeals overturned the sec's rejection of grayscale's bid to convert into a the trust into an ETF. And that's the whole trigger for all of this right now. But again, yet another source of supposed truth that you cannot trust. And there has to be, there has to be, there should be a punishment for lawmakers that say this type of stuff, especially when they hold a law degree. It's, uh, anyway, there's more. <laughs> also, media, switching gears now, uh, media uh, coverage on GameStop was totally wrong in the past. There's actually a great movie out about that right now. I've yet to see it, but I will once I get time. Uh, <laughs> I don't know when I'm going to get time. But there was tons of misrepresentation on the media coverage of the GameStop event. Some said it was a populist revolt. Some said it was Robin Hood's trading restrictions. Some said it was misconceptions about short selling. Others said, I can't remember all the different reasons, but tons and tons of different stuff, uh, pay for order flow, etc. Everything the media said about this situation was wrong. Wrong. They got nothing right. And that's just one example of media tying into money, tying into Wall Street. But there's more. What does the media do? Well, the media focuses on, and I blocked out some stuff because... I'd, oh, then of course the things did move. Anyway, um, this is an example of how the media focuses on the story that will get the most, I guess, emotions, feelings, make people the most upset as they go forward. And this is from a uh, shout out to Sanjay as well, who was the inspiration for this story today. Saul. Uh, Thomas Sowell, he said, basically, if people in the media cannot decide whether they are in the business of reporting news or manufacturing propaganda, it's all the more important that the public understands that the difference uh, and they choose their news source accordingly. This is the, one of the key messages for you all today. Be careful. Be careful who you can trust, who you can believe. And don't just read things or follow things because of clicks. Very, very important. Okay, let's talk about the finance news media. CNBS, are they biased? Hmm, let's have a look. Uh, Gordon Johnson, he is never off CNBS. Never off the channel. Why do they have this guy on when he is literally, literally one of the worst analysts in this country, in the bottom five percentile. You know why? Because he does what they want him to do. They know they'll bring him on. They know he will spread lies and FUD and scare people out of things to make sure that the news channel can get the money from their advertisers who are not the ones that this guy is against. All right? If you know the car industry, you'll know what I'm talking about. But let's talk about some facts regarding CNBS. Do they favor pessimistic headlines? Well, shout out to Ryan A. Hughes. Here it is, a clear proof point. The CNBC favors pessimistic headlines and stories over all others. 
so do CNN, so do all of the other news channels. That's just what they do. But the good news is the world is beginning to wake up to now understand that nothing good will come from believing the crap that they spew out, and especially from their world-class analysts that they have on all the time. It just it's a head-scratcher. And also, shout out James Levish, who said, the public fear machine is at full throttle. Warren, the SEC is wrong in policy of Bitcoin ETF. Gensler, Bitcoin is a highly speculative asset used for money laundering. Vanguard, Bitcoin ETFs do not align with the building blocks of a well balanced long-term investment portfolio. I just proved that was wrong. All of these things are wrong. All of them. Okay? Who can you believe? <laughs> well, you can believe James. <laughs> anyway, let's look at back to the Bitcoin and Bitcoin ETF. I analyzed all of yesterday's money flows. I analyzed today's up until literally 10 minutes before I went live. And these numbers I will update as well and tweet them out later and also show you more conclusions and show you exactly what this will correspond to as well because RGPT wants this in Bitcoin terms. So I'm going to do that for him as well. But here you have all the flows from yesterday. Now, the left-hand side is yesterday's flows. The right-hand side is today's flows. And there's a couple of things that you can just pull from this chart real quick. One, blue is GBTC. You can see yesterday is 43.3%. Today, it's 53.9%. It's all selling, not buying. All right. And there are 11 other ETF, 10 other ETFs, and they're trying to catch, I guess, the money, catch the coins. But here, you know, the most concerning is the selling on GBTC is accelerating. Maybe it's also compounded by the fact that maybe some people in Vanguard had GBTC and they're all leaving Vanguard, so they got to sell before they exit. Who knows? Uh, also, volume is down slightly since yesterday. You can see total volume, for example, of GBTC uh, yesterday was 53 million and today 42.7. BlackRock was 37. Now it's 21. Again, the day is not over. These numbers will go up a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, but I'll update this anyway shortly. Also, you can see Fidelity is catching up at BlackRock. That's good. ARK did very well today, so they had a bit of a slow day yesterday. Now I think they're in number four slot, which is great. But what's also interesting is the price deltas. Let me show you those for a second and zoom in here. You will see the price delta. This is kind of part of the Wall Street game. How can everybody... Let me zoom out for this so you can see my face. How can the price fluctuate so much between the ETFs from one day to the next? when the underlying is Bitcoin. Answer me that, ladies and gentlemen. That's crazy. So if you look here, the least fluctuating asset is GBTC, only down 4.48%. The most is iShares Bitcoin Trust from BlackRock, 6.6% as lower. And then you have other ones color-coded bitwise, 6.21%, then Wisdom Tree, 6.14%, etc. So that is worth investigating. Again, I can understand why GBTC is not down that much because there is still a 1.8%, 2% discount. But about the others, Invesco, Galaxy, Bitcoin, ETF, only down 5% versus 6.6% for BlackRock measured at the exact same time and they both had the same underlying this is the question and hopefully somebody's investing in getting this as well also volume delta you can see the arc 21 shares the only one arc 21 and invesco galaxy the only ones that went up today in terms of volume the rest rolled down some down significantly like blackrock uh franklin down huge also, hashtags down nearly 80%. So this is a very telling little story here of exactly what's going on. Again, I'll break them down later. I'll share this model on Patreon and uh, share a quick uh, piece as well on Twitter. But it's interesting to find out. Let's dig into one as well. I did say I had a lot of questions. I could back most of them up. Some of them I can't figure out why these price discrepancies exist. Anywho, maybe it's just a bumpy time out there. Let's talk about BlackRock. Tanks 15%. At the exact same time, overlay the charts here. You can see the BlackRock asset fell 15%, but Bitcoin only fell 10%. Hmm. Something up there. Do you want to buy at the open? No. You wait. Or maybe, maybe, 
theorizing here. Perhaps they sold, I don't know, a couple of thousand Bitcoin worth at this top price. And they bought them all today at a much cheaper price. Who knows? Just questions. Um, somebody who looks at charts would ask, and hopefully you'll all start asking as well. A lot of questions. And again, I go back to the question I have. Thanks for playing, Wall Street. <laughs> now, again, going back to that same question, is it possible they accepted cash yesterday for Bitcoin and they're settling today and they're buying today? We'll see. But there's more. Let's talk about the OTC balance. And a shout out to Mike, if you're out there. And uh, this is Mike, kick this over to me. It's from Black Kiwi. We have lots of Kiwis in the community, but this is the impact of the Bitcoin ETF exchange traded fund, not only on the price of Bitcoin, but on the OTC balance. And this is an aggregate of a number of different OTC counters. So yesterday they had 1,250 Bitcoin. Today they got 600. And it suggests that there is a growing demand for Bitcoin. Obviously we know because the ETS yesterday alone had at least three quarters of a billion dollars come in, at least, maybe more. And this would require the purchases of about 15,108 Bitcoin. However, the OTC amount only covers a tiny, tiny fraction of that. This indicates that there is still a lot of buying pressure for Bitcoin, which could potentially drive up the price in the near future. It should happen. And again, 1,250 OTC yesterday across three trading desks, so BL and BLK have access to eight as per their S1, and approximately only 690 were left this morning, and another 90 Bitcoin were drained today, later this morning. So, where is this 14,000 and change Bitcoin going to come from? Maybe Coinbase has it. Maybe Coinbase bought it during the bear. Maybe now they give it out at a certain price. I don't know. Lots of questions. But this thing, actually, let's check the Bitcoin price. While we're here, uh, make sure it's going okay. Um, last time I left it, it was, it was on that strong support. 43,800, so 43,500 looked like solid support today. Let's get to the conclusion. Everybody, thank you all for being here as well. Hit the likes if you learned something. Sorry for being a bit passionate about this, but again, overall, the only thing you need to know is Bitcoin price will go up. Money is coming in. Forget the FUD, but there are some funny games happening behind the scenes. It's far from perfect. People still have that imagination where you put a thousand bucks into Bitcoin, you buy one of these ETFs, it immediately goes out and buys Bitcoin. That's not how it works, unfortunately. Uh, let's talk about the conclusion real quick. Three things. You all out there as individual investors, these are the impacts of the story on you real quick. One, very important to understand the effect of corruption on investor sentiment. Also, vulnerability of retail investors to misinformation and manipulation, absolutely critical. And the importance of education and awareness of exactly how these things work. Stay the course. Don't get shaken out. Don't believe the FUD, the lies, no matter where they're coming from. Do your own research. Find trusted sources. Okay, we're talking, don't believe government. Don't believe media. Don't believe Wall Street. Who else? <laughs> the key in this game is to be ahead of the curve. Front run. The rest. That's how you make money. Okay. So sorry about the bumpy week. It was a great week. It was a historic week and it was an exciting week. But I know that a lot of you are very stressed out. Not what you expected. And hopefully this explains exactly why. So shout out as well to everybody on Patreon. I got my little Patreon mug here. Ta-da. And uh, we have a new member today. It's a Crypto Paja says, join Patreon last week, loving it. Thank you, Crypto Paja, and welcome. We're glad to have you here in the community. So we'll get through this stormy seas. Never made for good sailors. Or what is it? Flat water, calm seas don't make for good sailors. The stormy ones do, and we had some storms this week. So thank you all again for coming. 5,000 people watching live. Love that. And I'll see you all tomorrow with the weekend recap. And it'll be a big one because a lot happened this week as well. So thanks all. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.